Okay guys, so welcome back. So in this video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell you which cards I think are great and what cards I would recommend you get for a fire deck. And I'm not going to do a budget because obviously there's going to be different people playing and different people at different budgets. So I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to break it down into different deck elements that are very important and tell you which ones are very good and which ones I use a lot. And then I'll also tell you why I think that. And then from there, and based on your budget, you can build the deck however you see fit. So as I said, let's go to the marketplace. And we're going to start with fire because it's the logical place to start. And it's also very simple because we're going to start where I always like to start, which is summoners. So when you look at fire summoners, you can straight away see it's still built to be a me melee deck with the one exception of a Yodin. Yodin will transform a fire deck into a highly explosive archer deck. But apart from Yodin, if you look at beta, it's melee damage. If you look at Chaos Legion, it's melee damage. Dice is Pierce, but Pierce works best with melee. And then Pyree is speed. So technically, you could use Quid, you could use Pyree for archers or no melee matchups but when i play no melee matchups i just avoid fire like the plague unless i own a yodin so just to start yodin is very very expensive guys i don't recommend or state that you need a yodin to play this game it's a very very nice card to have i wish i had mine again it's 800 dollars now i sold mine for 630 but no regrets I would say that if you're new to this game or if you're just building your fire deck, the only summoner you need is a Tarsa. I think she is so strong in the sense that she basically destroys the need for the beta summoners. So Paldo used to be the same amount as a Yodin, but he's been destroyed because of Tarsa. Malric also used to be worth so much, but he's been destroyed because of a Tarsa. And the thing that a Tarsa does that's really crazy is that it basically is a combination of the two beta summoners but instead of costing six mana she only costs four and she's just a cheaper version of a paldo ember storm so really strong card honestly she's the only summoner you actually need for your fire deck and because you buy in tasa you already know how we're going to play this fire deck we're going to play it melee we're going to focus on melee monsters that have reach in our position twos we're going to focus on assassins and opportunity cards but i'm still going to give you a breakdown of what other cards you should have so the next step is always legendaries so when it comes to the fire legendaries the must-haves would be a scorch fiend because it's a budget chicken and this will be your most used card in your deck because it's basically a free card so anytime that you don't have enough mana you're putting this card in to take an extra hit of opportunity, of snipe, of stealth. It's just a really good card. You don't need to level a Scorch Fiend. You keep it level 1. Only if you're playing with the really big boys does it matter because then you can get demoralized at level 4. But if you're playing anything below Diamond, you stick into a level 1 Scorch Fiend. You do not need to pay 66 US dollars to get it to level 4 just for demoralize. You have so much better, more uses for your cash. The next stage that's very important is I would say these legendary tanks are really strong. So Grum, super, super strong because of Bloodlust. Only card that's a non gladiator card right now that has Bloodlust, so super, super strong. Magnor, really strong as well, has Taunt only fire card that has taunt right now so these two cards very very strong i honestly think all of the other cards are luxuries so flame elemental is a really elemental phoenix is a really strong legendary but you need it to be level two because you need the extra magic damage and you need blast without it it's honestly an average uh legendary card lord of fire and ajan Aj ajanu good cards but same thing, you need this card to be higher level. So it's got more HP and then ideally with an extra two attack. 
then it's really strong because then you could equip this with your Tarsa and he's suddenly a really good card. But it's honestly just a luxury right now. You don't need to get one of these. It is a, it is a good card to have, but there are many other cards that have reached that we can substitute him for. Lord of Fire, also a good card. But you also do want some levels to get the benefits and the abilities coming out of him. Oops. Why? Back to the market. <laughs> okay, so the other ones, like the Zalran is good and Life Leech is cool. But the only time you'll really use him is an Equalizer game. And then the Ilfrit. Honestly, it's a garbage card. Recharge, I hate recharge right now, so I don't recommend it. If you get this card, maybe you can try and use it. I don't like it. This card is actually a decent one. It's better late game, when you can get some cripple, immunity, and thorns on it as a position two tank, but still a good card, and I would still recommend you use it. Maybe, especially at like reverse speed, you can combine these two in like reverse speed 99 mana games. But there are better position twos than a Kaladrum. So not the most important. So I would say top priority, Scorch Fiend, then your Grum or your Magnor, and then the rest are just luxuries. Even these two tanks are luxuries, because I'll show you guys some cheaper tanks. So I think let's start in the position one. So position one, we're talking about tanks. There are a lot of tanks in fire. You've got things like your Molten Ogre, Tusk of the Wild, uh, your Minotaur. There's a lot of strong tanks, but my favorite tank by far is the Living Lava. It's my most used tank. It's what the Conorman plays. It's just a, it's got bad speed, but it's got shield, which none of the other ones have. And then more importantly, when you level it up, is that it only levels up your HP or your armor for the first few levels and then eventually the speed will never change but it's just HP armor HP armor HP armor and then eventually you get a new spell but that's exactly what you want from your tank you want it to just only be a tank it's already got good damage the only problem with it is the speed but that's okay other tanks if you can afford them like this tank and this Hull Dog, I've honestly said many times before, it is so strong and it definitely shouldn't be classified as a 4 mana card. It should probably be a 5 mana card, especially if you can get some more HP on it, because then it's got more HP, so that the heal then heals itself more. So it's a really strong card to get. If you can afford it, it is a bit pricey. Other cards that are cool is Serpent of the Flame, but I would only want to get this once you can get a little bit more uh, levels on it because then it gets armor. So armor is really important because you can then pair it with repair because repair is also just broken. And then also poison is really cool. Ideally you want level four because then it gets the extra damage because at the moment it lacks a lot of damage, but it's a super strong beefy tank with retaliate and poison if you can get the levels. And then another tank that needs to be mentioned but it's not really a tank is the serpentine soldier so that what makes this card really good is that it's got super high speed plus it has dodge so it's just this lethal it's got no hp like it's hp and armor super low but it's the super lethal dodging card which is also just really fun to use but it's not really a tank so i would say this would be your genetic or generic like base tank and then these two are your luxury tanks or the legendary tanks that we mentioned above. Uh, for position two, this is where a Finis Rage is the best card in the game. It, by far, like you get five speed, you do get your two damage and your eight HP. And then with Tarsa, it's gonna become three damage with nine HP, it's such a good card. You will basically use this card so much. Uh, you've also got other options like Giant Rock. Uh, there's another good one here, which is Radiated Brute. But for two mana less, you get two less HP and then four less movement speed, which is actually a big deal. Uh, you can level it up, but you should be trying to get it to at least a level four. That way it's got the three HP 
and then it'll become a much bigger heavy hitter. So I think a Radiated Brute would be so much cheaper than a Finis Rage. So if you're only going to get one card, get a level one Finis Rage. If you've got the money and your task is going to be leveled up, you can go with the Radiated Brute as the budget option. Uh, another notable position two that's not a melee card would be the Molten Ash Golem. I prefer this card to the Lava Launcher because a lot of people, especially in Silver, will play Magic. So Magic doesn't really do well, like armor is trash against Magic. So just having a big beefy HP position two is good enough for me. So that's quite good. Uh, same thing, try and get it to level 3 just so that you get one more archer damage. It makes a lot of difference to get it to the extra damage. Like when you level up a card, one speed is not that important, but making sure that your card can do one more damage is very important, especially since it doubles the damage in this case. Um, a position 2 that does magic, uh, I have to mention a Elder. I don't particularly like this card, but it does pretty much the same job as the Ash Golem, except it takes a lot longer to get it to level 2, because it needs to be level 4 in that case. And then pretty much this last stand is useless, because this card will mainly be position 2, so you'll never really get it to a chance where it will use the last stand. But that's okay, I don't think, this isn't a very important card to get, it's not that crucial for your deck, but it's just worth mentioning. Uh, for position 3, 4, and 5, these are where you're going to fill it up with your assassins, so sneak and opportunity. So coming in for number 1 is your striker. It is such a good card as well. Like, you'll have your tank, followed by a finish rage, followed by a striker that has 3 damage, 7 HP because of your Tarsa. Uh, another card that's really good is the Serpentine Spy. Uh, this card, if you can get it to level 4, oh, level 5 would be great, but being realistic, if you can get it to, oh, level 3. Level 3 is where you want it, just because it gets the 1 extra HP. Uh, the speed is okay, like, this difference is not as big, but just getting 1 extra HP, then you can suddenly get, with your Tarsa, it will then be 3 damage and then 3 HP. That's a big deal. It protects it from 2 damage snipes. So apart from him, another card, if you can afford it, is the Cobalt Miner. This, along with the Cerberus, are like my god tier. I always use them. Like, I know it's very expensive, but if you can get a level 5 or a level 4 out, it's really strong. Because then you can have... For 2 mana, a 3 damage, 5 HP stealth card, which is really strong. And then, if, you've already, if you've been counting, you've got your tank, you've got your card with reach, you've got Assassin 1, Assassin's 2, Assassin's 3. Another Assassin option, if you, if you don't want to afford the Cobalt Miner, is you go to Neutrals and you get the Baby Snake. So if you can get the big snake, that's good too, but only in like 99 mana games will you use the sandworm. You can get the budget snake, where he is basically, you're going to want to get him at least to level 2. Obviously the higher level you get him, for that extra HP it makes a difference. But minimum level 2, then you'll suddenly have a 3 mana, 3 damage, 3 HP. So obviously he'll have 1 armor, but he won't have the speed of the spy. So those are what you'll put in for your positions, um, but then I think just honorable mentions. As I said, I don't really like playing magic with my fire. I find it a bit clunky, so I, I, yeah, I don't really do it. There are some cool fire cards, like this new Jin Inferni and Jin Apprentice, but I'd much rather just play a full melee fire deck. Um, I think some archer cards are much more viable than the magic cards in Fire. So some archer cards that I would recommend is something like the Pyromancer. Pyromancer is super, super good, purely because it has Blast, so you don't need to pay for Blast. And then if you compare Pyromancer to the Flame Elemental, which also, or Fire Elemental, sorry, 
it also has blast. The main difference is for one mana more, you lose two speed, but you gain three HP. And when there's things like a serpentine spy that runs around with opportunity, two HP is not enough. And when you level it up, it takes a lot longer because you get speed at level two, and then only at level three do you get that one extra HP. And then when you get it to three damage, you lose that HP. So, yeah, I, I, like I honestly would say get a fire elemental to level three. It might not even be worth it. No, it's probably worth to upgrade. But basically, you play this card in like equalizer games because then it's got good damage, good HP, blast, and then the HP is covered because it's got good speed. Um, yeah, other good fire cards are like, you can just get things like the Etienne Spearman, good damage. And my favorite card of all time is the Fire Beetle. Like, never sleep on this card. It's two bucks a piece, but if you can get it to level three, it does two damage. It's got four HP and it's got snipe. Like, this is probably my most used archer card. It's crazy. I love the beta cards for fire, actually. Like, the Cerberus, Cobalt Miner, Serpent of the Flame, even the Serpent Serpentine Soldier. Like, there's some really strong beta cards for fire. And those are what I use. So, that's how I would build a fire deck, and those are the cards that I would focus on. Uh, the rest are obviously more situational, and I'm sure that there'll be a time and a place for them, but those are pretty much what I would say you'd need to fill out your deck for now. Anyway, let me know in the comments what you guys think. I'm now going to go to the competition. So hopefully in the next video after this one, there'll be the competitions running as normal. I know it's a bit delayed, but let's go. So let's get the comments. Okay, so we've got 30 comments that commented pineapple with your in-game name. And we're going to click start. And the winner is Hugo Ter Terrablanche or Terrablanche. Anyway, good enough for me. Well done, Hugo. I hope this is you. And now we go here, and then we go here, and then we go two packs, and I've got exactly 601, which is quite nice. Do you think I can click transfer, or do I have to make that a small o? Let's see. Nope, I'm just going to click transfer, because that's what he posted. Uh, hopefully it gets to you. So please like and subscribe and let me know in the comments what you want me to do next. And if you're a new player, please use the promo code and I'll happily send you the 0.5 US dollars back to you. It just lets me know that people are watching and using the promo and I'm helping new players join the community. Also, if you find me on the Discord, just pop me a message. I'll happily delegate any of the new players some power.